Is this the best all-in-one lens for Sony E-mount? Let's find out. How's it going? My name is Jussi and this channel is all about filmmaking tips, tutorials and gear. So Tamron just released this 28 to 200 mm lens, which might just be the best all-in-one lens for Sony E-mount cameras. Let's find out. So a company called Focus Nordic teamed up with me together with Tamron and they sent me this lens so that I could try it out and make a review of it for you and share my honest opinions about it. So a huge thank you for Focus Nordic and Tamron. And I will also share with you some example footage and photos so that by the end of this video, you'll be able to decide whether or not this is the right lens for you. Let's talk about the other focus of this lens. Now, because I had recently tried the 70 to 180 lens, I wasn't surprised at all that this performed in terms of autofocus really well. I mean, the autofocus was very good both with video and photos and the autofocus was also very silent. I mean, I didn't notice any kind of noise when the motors were doing the focusing. And I mean, the autofocus test with the Sony a7R 3 worked just fine with all of these different settings with different focal lengths and different f-stops and there was no issues. And in fact, we also did these different autofocus tests with my Sony a6500 and I was surprised that the autofocus was blazing fast and super accurate. I mean, we did, for example, this kind of a autofocus test where my friend Janne walked from out of the frame into the frame, then he did a little bit of a spin and walked out of the frame and the autofocus could follow him very accurately and it was super fast. So I'm really happy about that because now I know that this is a great lens for Sony APS-C cameras as well. So. Physically, the Tamron 28 to 200 mm f2.8 to 5.6 is a little bit smaller and 200 grams lighter than its closest competitor, in my opinion, which is the Sony 24 mm to 240 mm f3.5 to 6.3. And the Tamron is also significantly cheaper. With both of the lenses, the Tamron and the Sony, when you zoom out, the barrel extends. And the Tamron weighs 575 grams, whereas the Sony weighs 780 grams. And the reason why this is a big deal for me is that, for example, when we tried this Tamron on a gimbal, I balanced the gimbal when the barrel wasn't extended and the focal length was set at 28 millimeters. And then, because we were in this run and gun situation where I had to be very fast and I didn't have the time to rebalance the gimbal, then I just quickly extended the barrel and it worked just fine. There was no issues with the balancing of the gimbal. Of course, we have to remember that the Ronin S is a very powerful gimbal. But nevertheless, because the Tamron version, whoops, 
Because the Tamron is lighter, it's also easier for gimbals, and that's a huge deal for me. The Tamron costs $729, whereas the Sony competitor costs $1,048, which is definitely something to consider if you're on a budget. Another very big plus for me is the fact that it shares the exact same 67mm filter thread for ND filters, which means that you can now use the exact same ND filter without having to use any kind of step up rings. For example, with these lenses, the 17 to 28 mm f2.8, the 28 to 75 f2.8, and the new 70 to 180 f2.8 lens. And that's huge because now, because Tamron has all of these great affordable lenses, I'm actually considering to switch to full frame. I also took some example photos with this lens of my friend Janne, and I was surprised how good the bokeh, the background blur, looked both in 28mm focal length at 2.8 and with 200mm focal length at 5.6. And I was surprised with the results, they look pretty good, so I'd say that this is a pretty decent all-around photo lens as well, relative to the price. Now one downside with this lens is that it doesn't have any kind of stabilization built in, whereas the Sony version, the 24mm to 240mm, has a stabilization built in, which is really helpful when you're filming handheld. However, I did try this lens handheld and in fact, I zoomed it out all the way to 200 millimeters and I was surprised at how steady shots I could get. Also, honestly, one thing that I really don't like about this lens is the focus ring. Because it's focused by wire and it's kind of loose, it doesn't feel like it would be very useful or easy to do focus poles with. So, can you get professional looking photo and video results with this lens? Yes. And who do I recommend this lens for? Well, if you're looking for an affordable version of a great all-in-one lens that kind of does everything quite well, then this is a great option. Do I recommend this lens for professionals? Well, kinda. If you're looking for a casual lens for casual use, let's say for family vacations, where you want to carry only one lens and only one body, and you want it to be able to do many things at the same time well enough, then this is a great option. Okay, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, I recommend that you watch this video over here, or this video over here, because I think you're really gonna like it. Okay. Thanks for watching and see you again next time. Take care.